This video is about the epigenetics of honeybee caste determination. Before we delve deeper, first let's ask ourselves, what is epigenetics? Epigenetics means on top of or in addition to genetics. It is the study of heritable changes in gene expression that do not stem from changes in the underlying DNA sequence. A good example of epigenetics in action is in the caste system of Apis mellifera, or the western honeybee. There are three castes of honeybee, workers, drones, and the queen. Workers make up the majority of the colony and perform many different functions for their hive, such as defense, collecting food, and looking after young. Drones, on the other hand, are male bees whose sole purpose is to fertilize queen bees. The queen has the longest lifespan of the three, and her job is to lay over a thousand eggs per day. Worker bees are infertile females, drones are fertile males, and queens are fertile females. The sex of bees is determined by haplodiploidy, or in other words, males develop from unfertilized eggs and hence only have one set of chromosomes, while females develop from fertilized eggs and have two sets of chromosomes. Workers and queens may have the same genome, yet they have wildly different behaviors, morphologies, reproductive capacities, and lifespans. How is this possible? The answer is, of course, epigenetics. A difference in diet at the larval stage of development results in epigenetic changes that lead to vastly different phenotypes. The first stage of development is a totipotent fertilized egg, which at this point can grow up into a worker bee or a queen bee. Next, the egg will enter into its larval form. At this stage of development, the larva is still totipotent. What will determine the outcome from here on out is the diet that the larva is fed. If a larva is fed a special substance called royal jelly, the larva will develop into a queen. However, if it is fed a diet that has lower nourishment, the larva will then become a worker bee. So what makes up the difference between the queen destined larva who is fed the royal jelly and the worker destined larva that had a diet of, that consisted of lower nourishment? Researchers discovered that many genes are differentially methylated between the queen destined larvae and the worker destined larvae. A group of enzymes called methyltransferases catalyze the transfer of a methyl group to CPG structures in DNA. Compounds present in the royal jelly lead to differential DNA methylation, as well as potential histone modifications, which results in completely different phenotypes. DNMT3 is a de novo methyltransferase. Usually, female larvae that are not fed royal jelly become workers. However, when DNMT3 is silenced, they will develop into queens with fully functioning ovaries. This example demonstrates how epigenetic changes can have a major impact on phenotype. Thank you for watching.